so much fun. Yes. I'm a little tired though. Yeah, yeah. Should we take a break? Maybe, maybe. Maybe we could go in and do some math. <gasps> okay, okay. Let's review graphing reciprocal functions that have been transformed, and then we will graph rational functions. Notice that the example given is a reciprocal transform function, not a rational function. Let's write our transformations. So our parent function y equals one divided by x is vertically stretched by a factor of three and translated to the right one unit and down two units. So let's go ahead. Remember how we did these? We start with our asymptotes. Our asymptotes are normally at the x-axis and the y-axis, but we've been translated up right one unit and down two. So let's sketch the asymptotes first. Let's review our pattern points. From the intersection of the asymptotes, over a half, up two, down two, back to the intersection, over one, up one, down one, back to the intersection, over two, up half, down a half. All right. Now we have the intersection, but we've been vertically stretched by a factor of three. Normally we'd go over a half, up two, down two, but because it's multiplied by a factor of three, the y values are multiplied by three. Two times three is six. So we're gonna go over a half, up and down six. Back to that intersection of the asymptotes, over one, up one, down one, but multiplied by three, so up three, down three. Back to the intersection of the asymptotes, over two, and instead of a half, one half times three, so one and a half. Boom. Try B, write the transformations, then sketch the graph. So translated left three and up one, we should sketch the asymptotes first, then reflected about the x-axis or horizontal axis in this case, right? So now we're going to be in quadrants two and four. The examples are here because we want you to recognize the difference between the transformed reciprocal function and graphing rational functions. Let's pull all we know about rational functions together so we can start sketching graphs. In this first example, first thing we want to do, find the horizontal asymptote. Looking at the degree of the numerator and the denominator, well, it looks like we have a tie. It's just going to be the fraction in front. Y equals one. Okay. Now what? We gotta look for our discontinuities. Well, to do that, we better factor. Do you see what I see? I was able to remove that x minus two, so I know I'm gonna have a hole at x equals two. Well, I'm gonna need the y coordinate for that hole. How do I find it? Plug x equals two back into my simplified function. Looks like my hole is at two, three halves. Do I have a vertical asymptote? Well, yeah, I have a denominator in my simplified version, x plus two, which means I can't plug in x equals negative two. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative two. What time is it? It's hammer time. We gotta get all the things we can't touch on that graph, all those discontinuities. Now let's get some points on this graph. Let's find our x-intercept and y-intercept. X-intercept. Where am I looking? The numerator, set it equal to zero. Well, check it out. I got the x-intercept negative four zero and the y-intercept two zero. I plotted those on my graph. With a little bit more experience, that's probably enough to draw my graph because I know that my graph's going to hug those asymptotes. But let's maybe pick one more point just to be safe. On that right side, I can see the hole and I can see the y-intercept. So I know if I connect those two, they're just gonna hug my vertical asymptote and hug my horizontal asymptote. But on that left side, I only have one point sitting there. So let's pick one more just to make sure the graph behaves like we want it to. Let's plug in negative three. When I plug in negative three to my simplified function, I end up getting one divided by negative one, which is just negative one. So it does look like the graph is going to behave like I expected. It's gonna hug those asymptotes as I connect these two points. Next one, what's the first thing we're gonna do? Go find that horizontal asymptote, go find it. Y equals zero, why? Which one's stronger? Numerator, x to the one, denominator, x squared. Denominator, no cookie for you. So y equals zero. Now let's go find the discontinuities. How do we do that? Factor. Whoa, what happened here? I was able to remove that x plus two, which creates a hole at negative two, 
But what happens to my numerator? Did it just go away? No, it equals one. It equals one. So one divided by x minus six is my simplified form where x cannot equal negative two. So when I'm gonna go find the exact location of the hole, I'm gonna plug in negative two to one divided by x minus six. So we have a hole at negative two, negative one eighth, and then that leaves us with a vertical asymptote at x equals six because of that denominator. Okay, well, can I just move? <gasps> whoa, 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 we got a graph what we can't touch. Now we're ready to find the x-intercept. Well, what do we care about? The numerator, well, my numerator in my simplified form is one. One equals zero? <laughs> no, it doesn't. So what does that mean? No x-intercepts. Well, does that make sense? Oh yeah, look, can't touch that x-axis, so no x-intercepts. Oh boy, I've got a y-intercept here at zero, negative one, six. Once I'm looking at my graph, I don't have much to go on, so I'm probably gonna pick some extra points here. Like maybe see what's happening as I get closer to those asymptotes. So I'm gonna plug in five, and then I've gotta figure out what's happening on the right side of that vertical asymptote as well. So maybe I'll plug in like seven and eight, yeah. So I plugged those additional points into my simplified function and boy, that sure helps. Now I can actually sketch a graph. These two graphs looked kind of similar. I wonder if they all turn out looking like this. Example three, horizontal asymptote. Where's the power? In the denominator, x squared in the denominator. Okay, so that's one over big. That means no cookie for you. Our horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Next, we're gonna factor the numerator and denominator. Well just the denominator and see which types of discontinuities we have. Hmm, thou shalt not divide by zero. So X can't equal five and X can't equal one, but none of them divide out. So I guess I have two vertical asymptotes. Whew, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch my horizontal and vertical asymptotes. X intercept, Y intercept. Wait a second, I have a horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. There's no X intercept. But wait, there is. I need the numerator of the fraction to equal zero. Zero equals x plus three. I guess we have an x-intercept at negative three. So we do have an x-intercept, but wait a second, the horizontal asymptote was at the x-axis. Oh yeah, sometimes we can cross horizontals, but we never cross verticals. Okay, y-intercept, I plug in zero for x and I plug that into our factored form. Shoot, it would have been easier to go into our standard form, zero, three-fifths. I need some additional points. If you look at this, I know nothing happening between the two vertical asymptotes here or here. In addition, with some practice, we're going to start thinking we know what's going to happen, but we don't. Sometimes we have something that looks close to a parabola there, or we might have something that comes down like an upside down parabola. So then you think you got it covered, right? But no. We never quite know and we always need to get points because we can cross that asymptote and it could do something like that. So I'm going to get three additional points in between the vertical asymptotes and a couple on the other side. When finding your additional points, I find it easier to go into the factored form. Go ahead, find the y values for the given x values. Okay, points plotted. Let's go section by section. We have the first section where it crosses that horizontal asymptote, but we need to keep it hugging the asymptote. The middle section, we kind of think of it like a parabola, but remember, it wasn't symmetric. Okay, we've seen a great variety in rational function graphs. It could be as simple as a line with a hole in it, or it could be something like the graph we just did. Now it's time for you to try. They just told him to try something. Let's go. Okay, we have time. Snow schmo. All right, do you think we should recap? Sure, we're trying to sketch a rational function. 
first, you want to make sure you factor the numerator and denominator to find any discontinuities. Then it's a great idea to go ahead and sketch those discontinuities so you don't forget. Now, you should have already found your vertical asymptote if any, but check for a horizontal asymptote as well. Then you can find your x and y intercepts if they exist, and if needed, more points so that you're sure of the behavior of the graph.